All right, guys, this is Image Star with again, your Alpha Builder. Um, I'm going to try to go into why I don't really have a problem with Elon Musk. Let's get into it. All right, guys, I'm the Alpha Builder, and I want to, you know, talk about something a little bit different today, but... It's going to be why I don't really have a problem with people like Elon Musk. But if you guys stick with me, it's going to be a long one. I think this right here is going to be a long one. And I'm going to have to go into the lab. I'm going to have to pull out my videos and, and you know, just a whole bunch of different screens in order to explain why. But just stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this video. Um, now, when I first graduated from college, you know, during that time, it was back in the 90s when you know, you just graduated from college, you got you a good job. Once you get you a good job, you know, you just, you know, go to the office every morning and got my nice job. They kind of pay, take care of most of everything. You got your nice, you know, you went out and bought your car. You, know, you got your house and you started your family and everything was great. And you can live the nice corporate life that America has given you. And you wake up every morning and get your coffee and, hey, Bob, how you doing? And, and everything's just great. That's what you did back then. Especially if you got a job with the power company, you know, because the power company, for the most part, they say it's not a, they say it's not a monopoly. I think different. They control a lot of stuff here and there's no one that's competing with them uh, for the most part. And we're going to get into this right here, like power generation. I want to talk about that just a little bit so I can get all the way around to understand this so you can understand why I don't have a problem with people like Elon Musk. Now, if you guys understand how power works, well, let me just see if I can go right here. So I think I got a commentation screen right here. No, that's not the one I want. I want this one right here. All right, guys, if you look at this right here, so this right here kind of represents how things are set up in your neighborhood or wherever you're at. But if you notice that right here in Alabama, and I'm talking about Alabama, this is where power is generated. Now, in Alabama, most of our power plants, I think, are coal plants. They, they, you know, you, you dig minerals, you dig the coal from the earth, you use that to turn these turbines. And these right here, coal plants, and I think we may have one or two nuclear plants. Um, but it just depends on where you're at, what state you're in. Um, you know, actually, Alabama Power is a subsidiary of of um, Southern Power. So they kind of Georgia Power, Alabama Power, all those guys, all it's just one big giant company. OK, so what happens is you come here. Let me see if I can get another color here. Um, maybe that's a good color. You come here, you generate the power. Now, we don't have renewable energy here yet. Like renewable energy be things that just keep coming. It doesn't, you don't have to dig and deplete minerals from the earth, you know, to get this power, right? So we have coal, we have, what else we have? I don't think, we, uh, um, you may have uh, nuclear power is another one that you can have, but we for the most part have coal and maybe nuclear. These plants are a little ways, you know, they may be 25, 30 miles away from the municipalities of where we live, where we live in. But this generates the power here, runs it through these lines here, takes it to a power substation. This is where the energy, you got to reduce this energy now because this energy coming from these, that's, that's coming from here, it's coming and it's a lot of power that's coming here. Once you get it here, you're going to reduce the power, guys. So we reduce, reduce the power here so that we can feed it to the houses. And this is where we get our power at. This is how it works. Um, and when I'm building, guys, most of the time when I'm building, Alabama Power, you know, they service that neighborhood. And if you have underground utilities or you have um, overhead utilities, they're going to get an easement. They're going to get a, a right for that particular area so that they can do maintenance on the lines or if they have underground power, they can do maintenance there or to the transformers. So they control that. And they control your power bill. So you're kind of you're kind of stuck right here in this. You, you're stuck 
you're stuck if you're going to use Alabama Power. I mean, it, it, there's not like it's two or three different power companies here. So I wanted to be that competitor. That's where I came in at, guys. Um, so what I was going to try to do, so you kind of see how this right here thing works, I was trying to be the guy. So now if you generate your own power, and guys, we had the technology back then. Um, we have things like um, you have solar. You have geothermal. Geothermal. Um, which is probably the best way to go, um, but it's just too expensive right now. But solar, geo, then you have wind. We don't get a lot of wind here in Alabama, so that's probably not a good one. And you have wave, and I think in some places you have wave where the, the constant flow of waves in the ocean, it actually generates power. And then you have hydro, hydroelectricity. So if you got like a big dam or something like that, you can control that um, dam, the, the water, and it, and it spins those turbines. And, and you can do that. But but pretty much the best way that we can use it here, our best method would probably be solar. And we definitely had that back then. But the only problem was the solar was just way too expensive, guys. It was way too expensive uh, for me to put those on my houses. And, and people actually, people actually, um, they, it, it's affordable. And, and, and it can make up. You know, the, the amount of money that they spend on the solar panels, at some point in time, they can make up for it with paying lower um, energy costs. So that was the problem. It, it just took too long. Now, here's the here's the biggest problem that I had, guys. So when you're building, guys, I actually built, this is me back during that time. Let me see, can I find this right here? I think right here, and I may be able to pull this up right here. Um, if you type my name in on Google, so Emmett, Emmett, uh, I forget how to spell my own name now. Uh, and you just type in Green Man. I think they had it like that right there. Well, that's me, guys. So Green Home Building Catching on in Birmingham during a slump time. So we had, I think this may have been, this is actually in 2009, guys. They didn't have the pictures up here, but... Um, you can kind of, if you guys go in here, you can read this article right here. A Metro Birmingham home builder start to dip their toes into the green building trend. Now, I just want to kind of show you guys that. I don't know why this thing right here is, but I tell you, all these advertisers on here kind of messes things up. But, and guys, you can go in there and you can, you can read this whole article. Now, let me tell you what I was trying to do back then. Let me tell you the mindset that I had back then um, and what I was trying to do. So during that time, you have to make a house. It has to be a passive home. And what I mean by passive home is that you need to beef up the insulation. You need to beef up the way you frame the houses. So there, there are certain ways that you can frame houses, and they, they actually call it the advanced, uh, the California framing, or they call it advanced framing techniques where you have only two stud corners so you don't have those, those air gaps um, in the corners of the houses. You also had, you got to seal it really, really tight. So places where the OSB abuts one another, you got to seal all that stuff. Um, you have to create an air barrier. You have to caulk everything. Um, everything needs to be caulked. So it takes a it, it takes a lot of detail, guys. And at the end of the day, you have to have what they call a HERS rating. HERS rating is what they call a home energy rating system. And what that do what that does it it tells you how efficient that house is. But during that time, guys, I built a house that was fifty three percent more efficient than anything. That was out there in the market at that time, which means when you say it had a hers rating of 47 percent, a 47, which means that the house was 53 percent more efficient. What that means was that meant that this house used if, if you if, if you look at the energy that it used for, say, for instance, the air condition um, during some of the hottest time, you're going to save at least half, a little bit more than half. On that particular house. So you need to make the house extremely passive. It needs to be an extreme passive house. Um, your water. There, there are things you can do with the water. And just, just a whole plethora of things that you can do. Uh, to make it extremely passive. Then what you want to do. Is you want to. 
at that point in time, you want to add, you want to come in and you want to add, um, you want to add your own energy to it. That's how you want to do it. So you want a very passive house, then introduce your own energy to it. So instead of the power company, so what I was trying to do, guys, I was trying to remove this guy, which is where it's generating. You don't need these big giant power plants anymore. I was trying to destroy that guy. And then I was going to destroy that guy. And we were going to produce our own energy. We were going to come here. And in our case, we were going to do solar panels. Now, the problem here was you only get your sunlight in the daytime that can actually run your house. The problem is we're not there in the daytime. You're probably at work in the daytime and you come home at nighttime, right? Well, this is where Elon Musk came in at. And let me just say this right here, one thing too, guys. Um, the way these power stations actually work, guys, every time it goes from one of these to the next, the efficiency of energy gets lower and lower. You may start out right here at 100%. By the time you get here, you may be at, gosh, man, I want to say you might be at 50%. So you lose a lot of energy moving that electricity. But if you had those solar panels right there on your house, um, you'd be good. But during that time, one thing that we I didn't anticipate is battery backup. So you can put these battery backups on your houses and that will fix that problem. That's a fix to the problem. And this is where Elon Musk comes in at. This is where Tesla comes in at guys if you guys go look at let me see if you guys go look here let's see if i can find it right here if you go to the tesla website okay if you go to the tesla website you can actually come here and you can hit solar panels but i like the one that looks more like the roof the, one of the main problems that we had here in alabama is the fact that we have a lot of architectural review committees in the subdivisions that i was building in that i'm currently building in too it can't look too commercial. So if you pick that first roof, you know, that's going to look commercial. And not only that, it's, it's not going to pass the ARC, the architectural review committees in the neighborhoods that I was building it. They want things to look more traditional, like the other houses that's already there, because you want to make sure that you um, maintain the value of the houses that's in the neighborhood by having everything looking about, about the same. You don't want somebody to be too different. So if it were me, um, if you go to Tesla's website, you had this right here. And you can go to the energy part and you can go hit here and you can, uh, we'll get to the cars in just a second, but you can go right here and you can hit this and it gives you an idea of the solar panels that you can put on the houses. We didn't really, I mean, we had that back then, but it was just so, so much more expensive. And guys, let me just tell you this right here, guys. The people who are in the market to do this stuff, the people who are out here and they're in the market to buy houses. What I found out, what I found out is that when I build a house and I made it very passive, we talked about that passive earlier, passive homes. I do a lot of detail, spend a lot of detail on making those houses extremely efficient. Problem is people don't want to pay for that. They don't want to pay for things that they can't see. You can tell them, hey, man, I did this right here. But in their mind, you should have done that anyway. So that was the dilemma. So I was spending 20 percent more on those houses. Than a regular traditional house. So this same house that I came over here, that, that the same house that I built during that time, that was very that was 47, had a hers rating of 47, which was 53 percent more efficient home. It cost me about 20% more. I had to recoup that money. That's my profit. And then people didn't want to pay for that because they can't see it because everything that was energy efficient, it happened behind the walls, right? Now, today, guys, that's cold. You got to do it that way anyway. So now it's just, it's the standard now, okay? So this is what, let me kind of go back here. So we got that conversation screen. So this is what you have here, guys. Um, so they're looking a whole lot better now. And it is in, in Elon, this is, this is a Tesla website, guys. Um, 
Also, here was the next solution. And this is what I like about Elon, guys. This is why I don't have a problem with him is because number two, well, number one, this guy is trying to really decentralize. And this is the word up under me. He's trying to decentralize power. He's trying to decentralize. I mean, this is probably one of the He's trying to decentralize power. So the power don't belong to the big power companies. It can belong to you, which gives you control. It gives you control over your life and what you're going to do and how you're going to do that. You pay them off and you can just produce your own power from here on out. You can't beat that. I mean, you can get these power walls. This is another thing that that he that he um, came up with, with these big battery power walls. And let me see, we got a picture that you can kind of put them on. I wouldn't put them on the front of the house, but you can get these um, battery backups and I would put it inside of the garage. Now, let's look at how this thing right here works, guys. This is a good system here. So what you're actually doing is in the daytime, you absorb the solar, you absorb the power, and you power up the batteries. Now, you can have probably one of them. If you had two of them, I don't, you know, they do get expensive, guys. But if you had one battery, maybe have two two batteries. One is to charge up your car, your vehicle, and the other one is to power up the house while you're there or power up the house at nighttime. Or you may have to get three batteries. But this right here is the solution, guys. Now you can control. Now, and the only reason that you would be connected, like right here, you can see this right here is connection to the grid. Um, the only reason that you would be connected to the grid is probably for backup. So during certain times or certain days that that um you know maybe certain days that it's raining or you have an overcast or something like that well in this case you know you may have to have backup so the, the only purpose of the of those guys would be you know, your power companies would be backup this is the solution guys i think that this is the solution and, and here's another thing guys we can kind of go um this guy let me just kind of, I got a couple different things I want to talk about, guys. Um, this guy right here, I, I kind of went into the, um, we look at Tesla, okay? This is something that, I think you guys should do a little research on this right here. These are the Tesla's towels. Now, there was a guy, Nikolai Tesla, and I don't know if he named, his, named it after him, his company out there. I'm trying to see, but this guy right here, he actually died a broke man. And he was, um, he was funded by JP Morgan. If you guys ever seen the, if you guys go to the Titans of industry, let me see if I can find JP Morgan. That's him right there down at the bottom right there. That's JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Um, he was a Titan. I get it, guys. This is what these guys did back during that time. These guys, so what he did was he figured out a way to put meters on everything so that he can charge people and so that people would pay him so that he can centralize all the power. That's what he did. I can't say that he was a bad guy for doing this right here, but, you know, um, I can kind of understand why he did some of the things he did because he felt like that some people were not, well, that's another subject for another debate. But here's the thing. He he wanted to put a meter on everything. Nikola Tesla was trying to come here and he was trying to create a way. I was trying to see if I can get those Tesla tiles again. But these Tesla tiles, where he was trying to transmit, I think it's go. I don't think he ever succeeded with this right here, but you guys can go do your research on your own. But he was trying to figure out a way to transmit power through the airways instead of being connected to a wire. Um, hey, now that would be great. And I think he got his concept from, I think the Egyptian pyramids of Giza. I, I, I think you guys can do your research. And I think that's kind of what he did all this research with. But, but guys, during that time, during that time, guys, um, 
there were titans of industry who wanted to centralize all the power, kind of like Alabama Power. You had, um, who else did we have? We had, um, I can go back here. And I was just looking at this decentralization. That's the transfer of control of an activity or organization to several local offices or authorities rather than one single um, one. Single one. It's kind of like what's happening right now with the school systems. School system now, uh, the education system is now being a centralized um, item. So what you really want to do, the best way for things to operate, in my opinion, is decentralizing. Um, every community control their own. You control your own power. And I was trying to get back to the titans of power. I got a couple of these things right here. Um, so definitely. But I mean, you can read. They got some books on this right here, guys. To, let me see if I got one more. But you had these guys. You had John D. Rockefeller. Um, John D. Rockefeller said that uh, competition is sin. You know, he's competitive, but he believed that competition was sin. I think that's him right there. Let's see if I can get a good picture of this right here. These, these guys. Wish it would, um, there you go right there. Um, so JP Morgan, I mean, he owned a bunch of steel companies. Um, Andrew Carnegie. I forgot he did a lot of industry, but John D. Rockefeller, he did the U.S. oil. Um, so here's the thing, guys. So they centralized everything during that time. They even centralized the car industry. And the car industry, they made the car industry run off of oil. These guys were all together. Some of them uh, ran the steel companies, so they controlled the steel companies. And then what they would do, another thing that these guys would do, is they would team up. They would team up to run other people out of business. I mean, they would all get together. They would team up. They would lower the. They would team up, and they would lower the costs to the point where they just make. They just make enough to stay afloat. Now they got their money. They they're not worried about surviving. The the competitors were trying to survive. They were trying to live. So they would. Some of these guys would team up, and they would just say, "Hey, you know, we're just gonna get these costs down low, and we're gonna make. We're gonna we're gonna wait it out until everybody else go out of business because at some point in time." It's not going to be sustainable for them to stay afloat. And when they ran out of business, they kept it, they, they, they kept doing their thing. It's kind of like the, in the housing market, it's kind of like the Hispanic labor um, that we had. At one point in time, the cost was low. Um, you know, they lowered their costs. Black men, white men got out of the business. They couldn't, they couldn't handle it anymore. They couldn't, they couldn't work for those wages. And then, so then once um, they were all out of business, they bumped theirs back up again. I mean, that happens. But that's that's just being a businessman. If you have the methods and way to do it, it is what it is. And so these Titans guys, these Titans of industry, you know, they, they were strong back then. Um, you know, they centralized the entire market. Everything was centralized. They centralized it all. Which is why today you see these big trucks riding on the interstate right now. Everything is centralized. They got to move product from one central place all the way to the lower places. You know, um, you know, this is what's going on. So during that time, guys, I mean, that's why we had cars, guys. I mean, this is the transmission. This is why you had cars. You guys have looked this right here up. Who killed the electric car? This is why we had cars back then that ran off of oil and gas and things like that. You had to have gas. I mean, the lubrications um, that you had to have for your, you know, you got to have your oil in the engines to keep them going. This is why they created an entire system. And guys, here's the thing. You had, elect this is an electric car. That is an electric car back in the day. Why did the electric car get phased out? Because these titans of industry. These guys right here, they ran the oil company, so they wanted you to be dependent on oil. They ran the steel. They wanted you to be dependent on steel. They ran the show, man. They ran this thing. So you come here, and this is why. This is another. So then when somebody actually make a car, and I forgot the name. I think it was the EV1 or something. But when they actually make an electric car, 
was it? When they actually make an electric car, it actually worked. See, the first electric car was not Tesla. People, people come back and man, they just they hate Tesla. But they didn't they didn't make the first electric car. As a matter of fact, when they made those electric cars, it was the EV six or something. They made a bunch of them in. The electric car, because of the service industry that you had for cars during that time, it was so dependent on internal combustion engine cars or ICE cars until they would electric vehicles would totally destroy that industry. So in order to keep that industry afloat, they rounded up all the electric cars and destroyed them. You guys have to check that out. And what Tesla was trying to do is trying to give back, you know, by starting out with the cars. Then you have your batteries for your house. You got your battery backup. Let you see. You have your battery backup right here. You know, you can get as many as you need. Then you can produce your own power. Um, and you can run all this stuff through an app. Now, the goal the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal in doing this right here would probably be um, net zero. That's where you produce more power at the end of the day. You produce more power than you use. And in some cases, in some municipalities, in some states, not Alabama Power, they're not doing it here. Some states you can take the, you know, the, the, the additional power that you have, and you have more than enough during like certain months, like not the summer and not the winter, but the um, the spring and the fall when you probably could produce more power um, during those times because the temperature is not extreme. Well, at that particular time, you can probably produce more energy. Well, some states will actually take the energy. That you produce. So if you produce an energy and you feed back into the meter, um, they will pay you for that. Alabama Power is not doing that right now. Um, but this is the ultimate goal. Net zero. So I don't see a big problem with this right here, guys. I don't have a big problem with what Elon Musk is trying to do. This guy is trying to decentralize power. He also is trying to do this decentralization of power with uh he had something else. Um, it's called Starlink. Let me see. STR. Starlink Internet. Right now, I can't figure out a way to make it work because I think Spectrum is who I use right now. They're just um, Spectrum is a little bit cheaper right now. Um, and, and see, they're starting to act crazy. You know, they actually have a monopoly. Spectrum, uh, who I use, you got Chart and all these cable. At one time, you know, cable companies, you know, they charge all this money for cable. And then the internet was cheap back then. The internet was, I don't know, $40 a month. And all of a sudden, now the internet is $80, $90 a month now. Well, now they're getting close to Starlink costs. You know, these, these guys are not as expensive, you know, they're about $120 a month, and you got internet anywhere. You can, if you travel somewhere, you still got your internet. Elon Musk, and let me say something else about this guy, Elon Musk. And I'm not an Elon Musk thumper. Um, but what I can say about this guy, I can give him this right here, guys. I was trying to Click on these pictures that he have here. Maybe I can pick a pick a better picture. What I can say about him. Let me see if I got a image of him. Pretty good image of him. What I can say about this guy is that he thinks through things. He's 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 a thinker. He's really trying to decentralize the power. I don't think this guy is part of that good old boy team and network where they're trying to keep the power into the hands of the big companies, the big car companies, the big 
the big power companies, the big, all these other companies. I don't think that he's trying to do, you know, he's not part of that team, which is why I think they have a problem with it, especially the baby boomers. They really got a problem with this guy because, you know, a lot of the baby boomers, man, I'm a Gen X, but a lot of the baby boomers want to, this is what we know. And this is what we're comfortable with. And we want to keep this world the same way it is since I was a kid. Anytime you get into the pivot and the change, things are fixing to change. This guy represents change. He represents a paradigm change. And this is why, you know, this is why I don't have a problem with what he's trying to do. He's coming up with solutions, and the solution that he's coming up with is trying to decentralize the power. Um, I'm just trying to see if I... <clears throat> and I don't think, like I said, I think he's a maverick. I don't think he belongs to those good old boy networks. I think, and I think that's why they have a problem with him. I think these, these good old boys... Um, that they have back in the day who had all this power and, and they're trying to make sure that their family and their kids keep the power, which I can't blame them. Can't blame a man for trying to keep his kids up at the highest level. But I think he, you know, he's not part of that team. So I don't really have an issue with this guy. I think this guy's doing some good things. Um, and it's not just, a, I think the Tesla was just, Tesla, the cars and stuff was just his way of trying to get people used to what he's doing. It's kind of like, guys, I don't know if you guys knew this, but at one point in time, Mac, Mac computers, was, um, they were about to go out of business. Um, and you guys can probably look this up too. Uh, oh man, I, I don't know if I can pull this up. Let me just say Steve Jobs. Let's see. Uh, yeah. This guy right here, man, they were about to go out of business, man. It's about good. He was about done. He came up with a good idea. The idea he came out with. Now, Mind you, Bill Gates stole his windows. One thing Bill Gates had, Bill Gates, Bill Gates had the business side of things. He understood the business. So he put the business, he stole windows from this guy. And he went out here and he put the business behind that product. And it took off. Steve Jobs' um, Mac computer was failing. They were failing bad. It was about to go under. He had a good idea. I'm going to stick a computer. Or I'm going to put my Mac emblem. I'll put Mac in, in everybody's hand. And he did this, guys. I mean, it's an ingenious idea. He did this right here. Um, what they call those things? The iPad. He put these things right here in everybody's hand. No, it wasn't the iPad. It was the um, iPod. That's what it was. Those little iPods. Put them in everybody's hand. You can probably get them now, but that's what, your music. Then he switched that over to a phone. Started, you know, the screen touch phone. The, um, the iPhone. So then he put the iPhone in everybody's hand. Um, then once the iPhone got into everybody's hand, then uh, he was able to, um, you know, start it. You know, more people wanted everything to be synced up together. So then at that point, because they wanted everything to be synced together, he came up with the um, the computer started to merge together. Plus, the Mac computer had a better operating system. It was more stable. You didn't have to worry about that blue screen all the time. So this is what these guys did. It was an ingenious idea. Put it in their hands, and then eventually um, people would start getting used to it. Um, and then once people start getting used to it, <clears throat> then he could win. Um, now, what Elon Musk did, somewhat similar. He didn't really make any money off of the, let's kind of get some of these screens off of here, guys. He didn't really make a lot of money from from his cars. 
he first started making his money, and I remember this back then when I was trying to build green certified homes. He was making his money from carbon, um, carbon emissions. He was selling his carbon emissions. See, a lot of these car companies, because there's a world, there's a world platform that's trying to get us to not keep depleting minerals from the earth, trying to work together for the world thing, and so they started creating what they call carbon credits a carbon emission or carbon credits and so if you produce um things that emit less carbon like you know transportation items or things like that uh, renewable energy things like that that e emits less carbon um you get credits for it well he took his credits that he would get because he knew that some of these um like ford and some of these um some of these legacy automakers they didn't have the money and they didn't want to spend the money to um, revamp their entire factories to change them over to EVs, electric vehicles. It was just too much for them. So what he would do is he would sell the carbon emissions that he had to them. And instead of him making money from his customers with the Teslas, he was making his money from carbon emissions from the legacy automakers. This was an ingenious idea. They were paying him. To be the competitor because they those legacy they they those guys are so arrogant they was like he's not gonna beat us we got too much of a grip on the on on people and that's where they were wrong now the model y is the number one selling vehicle on the planet the tesla model y number one selling vehicle on the planet um so that arrogance is starting to go away. And they're starting, they're starting to try to make EVs now. Uh, but that's what he did. That's how he made his money. Then once he started getting to a certain point, he was able to start making money. He figured out a way to start making money off the cars now. These legacy automakers still hadn't been able to produce a profit uh, on their vehicles yet. And you know something else? Because Baby Boom was kind of getting mad at me when I kind of talk about them and the EVs. He's not really targeting you guys. He's not even targeting my generation. I'm Gen X. He's not even targeting. He don't, they, they don't care anything about, um, because, you know, the baby, but we want everything to be the same. You know, you know, EVs is like, like a political stance. You know, um, they want everything to be the same, but this new generation, the generation Z's and the millennials, they don't care. They just want a fast car. They want the best car out there. So, guys, I still have a whole lot more to unpack, man. I'll tell you what, I could probably go for another hour or so. Um, but I, just, I had a lot that I had to get off of here, uh, get off my board. And just let me make sure I got everything. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to start crossing some of these guys out. You guys should check that out. That Titans of Industry. I think I touched on those guys. And... Um, Let's see, J.P. Morgan. We talked about passive energy. Okay. And that's the carbon credits right here. Selling carbon credits has always been a lucrative business for Tesla. <laughs> that's how they got them. All right, guys. Um, I was hoping I was I, um, putting Lawson's thing on here. <sighs> but this is why I don't have a problem with the guy, man. I think you ought to keep it up. I think you got to keep it going, um, decentralize the power grid, you know, make it where everybody got a chance. Now that could be good or bad, man, because, you know, um, is everybody ready to take on these, you know, to take on these responsibilities? That's the bigger question. They, are they willing to do that? Once again, guys, like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell button. And I think, let me see if I have anything over here. I think that's it. You guys have a good one.